Hello, welcome to the next episode of Choose Love 2021. That reminds me of when I was little, they would say on TV, um, on all three stations that we had, welcome to the next episode of As the World Turns. Um, yeah, the world is turning. And we are held and loved by our papa in the middle of it all. That's the best part. So I'm going to jump right in and pick up where we left off yesterday, talking about, um, you know, the seasons of our soul that we go through. And if you had time to listen to Spring Justice, I hope that resonated with you, what God is doing right now in, um, in the nations. We are, we are literally birthing the heart of God as justice. And it's beautiful and it's scary and it's like, um, you know, any labor and delivery. It's a feeling of being out of control. But um, I wanted to just connect that with uh, a couple of scriptures. And the fastest way for me to say it is to go back and just read to you something short from the book um, that I did, God in Every Season. And the book that I wrote, God in Every Season. This book, by the way, is um, available also on audio. So if you like listening to audiobooks, I did record this. Sometime, probably later this year, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take a, a group through this book together and have it be interactive and discussion and maybe some small groups, that kind of thing. We might even be able to do it through um, the new app that we're going to launch. Um, so if you're interested in the book, you could get it now or you could wait until I announce it again later in the year. But, um, so in the second chapter, there's a, a verse that I highlight that should be very familiar to you. One of those that you love to put on your fridge or wherever Romans eight twenty eight, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. So we already know he loves us. It's not about us performing for him. This verse speaks into, um, you know, not like if you do this, then I'll do that. To me, it speaks into if you choose relationship back with me, like if we have something that's mutual, then I can guarantee you that everything about your life, I'm going to make sure that it lands in a, in a happy ending. And you know, that also is in the light of eternity. It's not just a happy ending for here. I like to say it this way. God gets the last word on everything that concerns his sons and daughters, especially when we choose to do life with him and him through him. So um, I'm going to read to you a short uh, part of this book, and it starts with a journey, a journal entry that I put in here from my journal um, called Invisible Guardrails on the Highway of Life. Invisible Guardrails on the Highway of Life. Right or left? What if I miss it? The questions of getting it right or wrong, hearing your voice clearly and obeying, have dissolved into the reality of your absolute redemption at every turn. Your voice guides me like the GPS that incessantly recalculates my path until I make it to the place I belong. Your goodness and your faithfulness secure me like invisible guardrails on the highway of life. You're so good at showing up in my messes, pushing and pressing, wooing and beckoning me forwards towards your plans and desires for me that I hardly even know when I've missed it. Plan A is almost impossible to recognize because you're always because you've always had a way of changing every plan into your best for me. No matter what I throw your way, you cause it to corral me into your better than plan. No matter where my lesser loves take me or how they distract me, 
You know just how to keep me on course. I refuse to live, listen to this, I refuse to live under the pressure of having to get it right anymore because you got it right for me. I'm done trusting in my ability to hear you perfectly and I'm counting on your ability to speak to me in ways that I can hear. Then I just want to read to you a few verses out of Ecclesiastes 3. It's verses 1 and 2, and then all the way to the end of that chapter, verse 11. Again, this will sound familiar. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. And then, of course, the chapter goes on to describe in more detail all the times that there are. And then it says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has put eternity in their hearts. Now I'm just gonna read you one paragraph from this page in my book. As this familiar passage in Ecclesiastes states, there is a season, an appointed time for everything an appointed rhythm, appointed transitions, and appointed victories. It goes on to say that God will cause each of the appointed seasons we go through to transition in his timing into something beautiful. Later in the same chapter, it says that he has placed eternity, an everlasting perpetual cycle in our hearts. That means no matter how unsuccessful your life may look or feel like at any given moment, when you love God and choose relationship with Him, you can rest knowing that it will all eventually translate into something good and important in the light of heaven and eternity. All things truly do work together for our good. So. The point in, in this that I wanted to bring up specifically for today is when we're talking about, and, and this is the last day of, of our Choose Love in January, which is the month where we're focused on God the Father versus Jesus or Holy Spirit. So God the Father, one of the things that I think is so important to know about him is that God is a God of process. God is a God of change. God is a God of forward motion. He is a God of cycles and seasons and patterns. We see it all throughout nature. We see it um, in our physical bodies, especially women do. And, you know, we see it in the actual seasons. If you live in a, a certain climate zone, then you actually see it in the seasons of your weather patterns. And I think that it's important to know this about our Father because it helps us to not fight the rhythm and the cycles and the seasons. It helps us to not panic when we feel like, gosh, will this ever change? Am I just stuck forever in this, this certain cycle? And, you know, I guess um, you start living long enough where you're able to look back and see just when you thought things would never change. They finally shift and cycle over into something new. And then uh, there are times where you just hope they never change. You want them to stay the same forever and, and they shift and they cycle over into something new. And I believe it's kind of like, a, if you think of a slinky, the toy that you had when you were little or, um, or a, a screw or something that is like this, it looks like in the middle of it, that you're just stuck in the same rut over and over again. But that's not how seasons work. Seasons, like if you stretch out a slinky, they're actually rotating, but it's moving along. The cycle is moving you forward. And so it's easy to believe lies about God in the middle of those cycles and seasons, depending on if it's a good one or a difficult one. And <clears throat> Just just know that about him, that he is moving you forward in the midst of, of the seasons. And I love the way in Ecclesiastes, Holy Spirit just tucked right at the end, 
something that seems kind of random. You've got this little rhythm pattern going on. It's like there's a time for this and a time for that, a time for this and a time for that. But then it ends with um, not only he makes all things beautiful in its time, but he has placed eternity in our hearts. What does that have to do with a time for everything? I believe it's, it's that final statement of he makes all things work together for our good. He's saying in the light of eternity, like I've placed eternity in your heart. So all these things that you're going through, these cycles and seasons are building towards something eternal, something that you're going to be really happy that I did in you and through you when you're standing before me one day. So I love that. I say it this way. He has rigged life in our favor. He has rigged life in your favor. It's rigged. We're going to have victory. He is making sure that everything that concerns you will be made beautiful in its time. And the only responsibility that we have in that is to take the free will that he's given us, our independence, and to spend it on him. Spend it on him. Choose him over and over and over again. We don't even have to choose him perfectly. We just have to choose him in the best way that we know how in any given situation or thought process. And this is a process. And he's so patient. This is a father who's so patient. And so we are made in his image. That means we have the capacity to be patient with ourselves and patient with each other and patient with um, the most broken among us and patient with the process that he has us in. Um, I'll give you the, the, um, the whole punchline of this book. You don't even have to read it to hear this part. The punchline is, um, you know, every season is difficult but if we choose him in the midst of it, we get to grow in the knowledge of who he is. And if we embrace each season, then it makes the following seasons that much sweeter, that much better. So, um, you know, one of, a couple of things I wanted to tell you, then I'm going to read something over you that's kind of like a, a soaking thing. It's going to be the Father speaking over you. It's super, super powerful, and I'm excited about reading this over you. But a couple of things I wanted to get out of the way first, because I actually want to end with that so that you can just really soak in it. Um, I'll remind you again, we're going to do, whoever wants to participate, temple maintenance for 21 days starting on Monday. And 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not your own. And, uh, you know, I, there are times when I live like I am my own. And I eat certain ways and I, I let certain things go in terms of my um, taking care of my body. And I think the reason why our bodies are so important is if our bodies are not healthy, or if um, our bodies have disease in them, it's so hard to give ourselves fully to what we were created for. Um, it can be done, and some of us have no choice. We just press on anyway. But to me, it's kind of like getting in a car. Like, I don't trust the seatbelt that I'm putting on to save my life. I, I put my hands, my life in the Father's hands. But I at least want to know that I've done my part. And so I feel like this temple maintenance and whatever, you know, even if you don't do that with us, let this be an encouragement to you. The areas that Holy Spirit has shown you to work on and to be diligent in, whether it's, you know, eating less sugar or, or um, moving your body more so that you don't get stiff and older, whatever it is that he's given you to do, like work your plan and be consistent with it. And, and this is just going to be 21 days where we encourage each other in that. Um, and it'll be more than that. I mean, there, Clay has some, some excellent um, material for us and, and opportunities for specific ways to eat. And if you want to lose weight, it's a good opportunity to do that too. 
So anyway, there's that. Also, um, on Monday of this week, I mentioned to you, I encouraged you to subscribe to our email list because I told you that we were going to send out an email that we couldn't put online some other way. And uh, Johnny and I ended up kind of processing through that. Um, we had we had fully intended to do that. Then we felt like we weren't supposed to do that. So I've talked with him and here's what I feel like I can tell you about that. Um, what we were going to send out is uh, an encouragement to do your own research about what's happening in our nation. You cannot just easily find information, the truth from our perspective in mainstream media. And so we were going to send you some links to places where we have found good information. Um, we also respect the fact that there are some people that don't, they don't really want to know. They don't want to research that and they're okay with taking things at face value right now. And again, we respect that. So, um, there is one, uh, video podcast that we listened to over the weekend that we thought was super powerful and it's a couple, um, I'll tell you their names in a second. They do this podcast and they interviewed a man who is, um, has a lot of intelligence, uh, background, military intelligence background in the United States. And he actually never shows his face in any of his interviews because of his background. Um, and his current connection to President Trump. And um, he's interviewed by this couple who is a really neat Christian, but the man that they interviewed is Juan O'Savin, and I'll tell you how to spell his name in a minute, but Juan O'Savin, um, they interviewed him on January 20th, and the information that he gave was such an incredible overview of a spiritual perspective of what's happening in the natural. So it could be really stretching for some of you. For some of you, it could just be confirmation of what you've already been sensing or reading in other, in other ways. Um, so the couple that does the YouTube, you can find their channel under their names and their names are David and Stacy Whited. Stacy is spelled S-T-A-C-Y. There's no E in her name. Stacy Whited, W-H-I, T E D Stacy Whited. Um, the name of their program is Flyover. One word, Flyover Conservatives. Flyover Conservatives. I'm not going to put a link to that here in the comments because um, I don't want to get deplatformed. And again, it's their interview from January 20th. Juan O'Savin. Juan is spelled J U A N and then the letter O, and then Savin, S-A-V-I-N. Um, Juan O'Savin is not his real name, but he'll explain that to you in the interview. It's long. It's two hours. It's worth listening to the entire thing if you're interested in doing a deeper dive on what's happening in our nation right now, and it's very encouraging. All right, so there's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what the weekend challenge is before I read this over you. The weekend challenge is so amazing. It's something that I got from my dad. Um, I told you about my mom and how awesome she is. Well, my dad is like, he's the one that instilled in me a love for worship. And he helps me pick some of the songs that, um, that I give to you. And he is so tender, um, towards the Lord. And I, when I used to lead worship, it was just, so, always so encouraging to look out because they they went to our church too. They were leaders in our church, and I would look out and see him just either smiling or tears streaming down his face, and of course worshiping himself, and just you know it just just meant the world to me. So I'm happy to share with you something that he shared with me and my whole family two Christmases ago. He gave our whole family a journal and um, a really nice one, and he wrote sweetest note in it that is so precious to me. And he also said, um, cause we were all in a cabin together for Christmas and he told all of us and all the grandkids, um, 
take your, your journal and we're going to all go spend, I think it was like 30 minutes alone with the Lord in a separate part of the house. And I want you to ask three questions and put them in your new journal. So I put these already in the comments and, um, but I'm just going to read them to you. You're going to ask and then journal, ask yourself, what is it that I want to be known for? What is it that I want to be known for? What that question speaks into is your glory. What is your original glory that you were created for? Your glory is your reputation. It's what comes to mind when someone thinks of you. What do you want your reputation to be? What do you want to be known for? Number two, what would I like for people to adopt from my life? What are the things about you that, that you think would be worth repeating? Um, number three, if I were standing before God and I asked him to let me know how much he cared for me, what would he say? Three questions. How do you see me, God? What do you think of me? And what do you feel about me? So I remember sitting down with these questions when my dad sent us all off and to write in our journal. And it was a little intimidating at first. It's like, how am I going to hear like word for word, something straight from God to my heart. And as I just started writing and just the first word that I, that I was impressed with, and even though I thought it was just me, what came behind it was just this, this, this understanding that I was able to put into words of really what the father feels about me is just, just so sweet and so powerful and I'll never forget it. And I have the words now written down that I frequently go back to just to, because they're fun to read what he feels about me. All right. Um, so that's your weekend challenge. Should you choose to take the challenge? And I recommend that you do the song that I'm going to give you for the weekend too is um, by Callie, and it's called All I'm After, All I'm After by Callie. Callie's name is spelled K-A-L-L-E-Y. She just goes by her one name, All I'm After by Callie. Callie is a worship leader out of Bethel, and she's the one who's, um, she and her husband's youngest daughter, Olive, passed away, and many of us contended with them for her resurrection. And she had just prior to that completed these two albums called Fault Lines, Fault Lines 1 and 2. And the whole, both of those albums, the whole project is so profound. So if you want something to just kind of listen to throughout the weekend, I would, I would download both of those albums, Fault Lines 1 and 2. And she's got a really unique um, creative sound and it reflects the creative lyrics that she has but she takes you on a journey that is really amazing um, in those two albums but if you only have time for one song i recommend all i'm after okay i'm going to read this to you i would love for you to just close your eyes and soak this in this is going to take me probably five minutes to read over you so um here we go. This is the father saying, know that I love you. You are my daughter. You are my son. I love you. You belong to me. What delight I have that you're mine. What delight you give me when you know that you're mine. You are hidden in me. And nothing can take you from my hand. Nothing can divert my gaze from being on you. It always has been and always will be. Today and tomorrow and through every night. You are always in my sight. I am yours. I am in you. I hold you together in the very structure of who you are. I hold you, I surround you. You have access to all of who I am from close, from within you. I am behind every breath and every beat of your heart. I know you in ways you can't even imagine or understand. I know everything about you, what makes you, you. 
I know your every thought, word, choice, and action. I know you so well that I know what you'll do and the choices you'll make before you even make them. Because I know how you're made, what you've been through, and how you process things. You don't overwhelm me. And I'm never discouraged when I think of you. I know you and I love you. I'm easily able to enjoy you like you are right now. You're the one that I've chosen before I set time into motion. I chose you to live now. I chose you to come alive to the reality of who I am in this time in history. I chose you because I wanted you to know me like I know you. I wanted you to discover in a way that you'll know for all of eternity that I value you. I wanted you to discover that I want you. You matter. You have significance because I made you, because you're my son, because you're my daughter. I want you near me with nothing between us. Jesus, his perfection, was enough to tear down anything that would ever keep us apart. Because of your great value to me, I sent my very best just for you. Before time, I created you perfect and blameless, enough to fill my heart with joy forever. What was stolen from you from us has been restored. I look at you and I see you as I made you. Perfect. You don't disappoint me. You thrill my heart with one look my way. I am for you. I was for you before you were born. I was for you in the midst of the lies of your circumstances and tragedies and crisis. I was for you in your worst moments so far. I was for you yesterday, and I will be for you tomorrow. I will be for you every moment you have yet to experience. I'm already there waiting for you, waiting to show you who I am and how much I care. You must look for me. I'll be the one who's for you. I'll be the one with the answers you're looking for, the peace you're craving, the love you're needing. I'll be the one cheering for you. I'll be the one speaking life to sustain you and comfort you. I'll be the voice of truth. So listen for me. I'll be the proud papa waiting for you to come home to, always ready to process with. The one with the satisfied look on my face, full of pride, and who you are because you're mine. I tell you now and every day if you'll hear me, you are of immeasurable worth to me. You have value beyond your comprehension. Anything that tells you otherwise is a lie from our enemy. You matter. I've given you important things to say and important things to do because you are important. So say them and do them boldly and in confidence as one who is valued, loved, and important because you are. Do them with me and through me because all I've ever really wanted was to be close to you and for us to know each other face to face. In me, you can do anything. You can get through anything. You can be as important as I created you to be. I value you so much that I want you to represent me. Show them who you know me to be. You can know me. You already do know me more than you think you do. You've seen me and you've known me and you can know me in an ever increasing way. Discover me today. Look for me and care about what I care about. Know me and know that I love you. No one could love you more than I do right 
now. I am your Papa, your rainbow God, your seven colors of love. Whew, that gets me every time I read it. Thank you, Father, for this love. Thank you for this love. Thank you for this relationship. Thank you for the sweetness of your gaze that is on each one of us right now. And we just let it in. We feel you. We desire you. God, I pray for those that are watching right now that you would draw them into a deeper place with you even this weekend, that you would pull them aside and they would say yes. And they would come away just filled to overflowing. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. Um, I forgot to tell you, and I run out of time every time, so I'll shift it to Monday. But again, I was going to tell you about how I find, um, how I get through scriptures. So I'll do that on Monday. And on Monday, we'll start with um, God, uh, Jesus, the Son of God. And oh, cannot wait to spend a month just diving into Jesus, all that he is. Um. Thank you so much for all the great feedback that you give me, and it really makes this fun for me. I love how hungry you are. I love how grateful you are, and so it's it's uh, rock to a good start this year. We're gonna um, we're gonna discover some amazing places in our Father. So uh, have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'll put some links for you to some of the things that I've talked about in the comments, and you are loved. See you on Monday.